Hi, cruise fans. Welcome back to Cruise Blog. This is Allie. Today, we're going to be talking about 16 tips to not waste money on your first cruise. Let's get into it. One of the best aspects of cruising is that, for the most part, they're very budget-friendly vacations. The base fare of any cruise line you choose will include lodging, select food and beverages, transportation between ports, and entertainment. You could essentially pay just the base fare and still have a wonderful vacation. And while there are many cruise tips and tricks out there to make sure that both experienced and first-time cruisers alike get the most out of their vacation, it's important to know the best ways to save money when it comes to planning your trip, as well as once you get on board the ship. So here are 16 tips to help you save money when planning your cruise. Number one is book your cruise as early as possible. Here at Cruise Blog, we are big advocates for book early and reprice often. The cheapest rates are often found as soon as the cruise line releases their itineraries. If there's a specific ship or itinerary that you have your eye on, the safest bet is to book it as early as possible. As staterooms fill up, prices are raised. That being said, it also helps if you can be flexible in your booking and take a cruise during the off season. In the Caribbean, this means that you can sail during hurricane season as well as January through March. If you're looking to cruise to Alaska, check out sailings that depart in April, May, or October. You can often find the cheapest fares if you're willing to sail on older ships or shorter itineraries as well. Last minute rates are not always guaranteed though. Even if they are, you might find that travel expenses make it just as expensive as if you booked earlier in advance. Number two is to go for an interior cabin. Unless you're planning to spend a lot of time inside your cabin, you should choose an interior stateroom. These are often the cheapest accommodations available and they have the same basic amenities as an ocean view and balcony stateroom, like including a television, mini fridge, and safe. This is a great option for those who are looking to cruise for cheap as possible and for those who are looking to make the most of their cruise budget. A cheaper stateroom might allow you to spend extra on shore excursions or specialty dining as well. Whatever the reason may be, you'll still be able to access the same amenities throughout the ship as everybody else, excluding those specific to suite only guests. Number three is to select a guarantee rate. If you aren't picky about your cabin location, we'd recommend allowing the cruise line to choose your stateroom for you. Choosing a guarantee rate for an interior cabin is most likely going to be the cheapest option available when you go to book a cruise. However, guarantee rates for an ocean view room can be the same price as selecting an interior cabin in advance. In other words, you could get a cabin with a view for roughly the same price. Most of the time, you won't get an assigned cabin until close to your sale date, so this could mean receiving a cabin that's in an undesirable location, such as below the nightclub or even under the pool deck. But if you're willing to take the risk, this is a great way to save some money when cruising. Our next tip is to utilize bid programs. Four mainstream cruise lines, including Norwegian, Royal Caribbean, Celebrity, and Princess, offer bid programs that allow you to choose a price and bid against other fellow passengers for stateroom upgrades. On my last Royal Caribbean cruise, we booked an inside guarantee and bid to upgrade to a junior suite for $300 each. In the end, this ended up saving us about $4,000 compared to if we had booked a junior suite right off the bat. The main The major downfall of this is that nothing's guaranteed when you bid, so make sure you're content with the stateroom that you initially booked before you place a bid. Number five is to pack all toiletry essentials. Be sure that when you go on a cruise that you're packing all the toiletries and medications that you may need along with extra. If you forget something, you'll have to pay a premium price on board to get it. It's also important to note that cruise ships don't have full pharmacies, so your selections are pretty limited. It's better to be prepared than to have to pay extra for your medication or product on board that you have stuffed in your cabinet back home. If, however, you find yourself in a position where you need that certain forgotten item, shopping at a drugstore in port will probably be cheaper than buying on the ship. Number six is to routinely check the price of your cruise. I'm a huge fan of this one. If you find that the cruise fare has gone down after you booked, most cruise lines will adjust your rate to honor the lower pricing. While still on board my last Royal Caribbean cruise, I booked a sailing for next May. And by frequently checking the price online, I was able to call and save $200 when I noticed that the fare dropped. However, note that most will not adjust after final payment. So it's important to read up on your cruise line specific policies and pay off your cruise as slowly as possible. Number seven is to utilize the cruise line's online planning portal. Once you've booked your cruise, you'll gain access to the cruise line's online planner. Here you can book dining reservations, shore excursions, onboard Wi-Fi, and other add-ons in advance. 
Booking in advance means that you'll be able to have as much of a hassle-free vacation as possible, and it will often save you money too. Depending on the cruise line, you might be able to receive 10% to 35% off onboard prices for specialty restaurants, drink packages, shore excursions, and Wi-Fi. Carnival, for instance, will offer a 10% discount on its Cheers beverage package if purchased prior to embarkation. In addition, Royal Caribbean often allows guests to bundle beverage and Wi-Fi packages together for additional savings, so be sure to check the online portal after you book your reservation. Number eight is to skip specialty dining on your first or second cruise. The base fare for all cruise lines includes a variety of complimentary dining options. If it's your first or second time cruising, you can still get the full experience on board without splurging on specialty dining. In theory, you could board the ship and not pay a penny extra for food, especially if you plan to eat before disembarking at ports of call. That being said, a lot of cruise lines offer dining packages that will allow guests to enjoy multiple restaurants for a flat fee. Royal Caribbean, for example, offers a package that allows their guests to dine at their signature steakhouse Chops and another venue of their choosing for around $85 when booked in advance on the cruise planner. Plus, you'll also receive a 40% discount off bottles of wine under $100 and 20% off bottles of wine above $100 during two meals. Another tip is to book specialty restaurants for lunch. Choosing to dine at Chops for lunch will incur a cover charge of $29.99 per person, while dinner costs are double around $60. $65 per person. Number nine is to bring cash with you for ports of call. When you're on the ship, you're able to charge everything to your onboard account through a cruise card. This, however, will not work when you disembark in ports of call. Depending on where you're docked, some taxi drivers and local vendors will not always accept your credit cards, and depending on which credit card you have, you might even be charged a foreign transaction fee. While cruise ships have ATMs, the fees can often be sky high, as you imagine, so it's important to plan on bringing cash from home for these incidentals. Number 10 is to consider booking excursions through a third party. And first, we will proceed with caution here. All excursions booked through the cruise line guarantee your return on board, even if there's a circumstance that delays your tour by multiple hours. They aren't obligated to wait on late passengers that booked excursions on their own. I once booked a snorkeling excursion in Aruba through Pelican Adventures. It was only $50 per person, and while it included an open bar with snacks, it did not include round-trip transportation to and from the port. This did not bother our travel party, though, and the taxi was only $10 each way. We had an amazing time, and we were able to get back to the ship with plenty of time to spare. However, we were not scheduled to leave Aruba until 11 p.m. that evening, so we felt safe taking the risk doing our own thing. Booking independently can be a great way to save money on excursions that cruise lines will charge extra for, but you need to know and evaluate the risks before making that decision. Number 11 is to buy or not buy a drink package. Rest assured that you'll always have included drinks to choose from throughout the duration of your cruise. All cruise lines include select beverages in your base fare. At the bare minimum, you will have water, tea, coffee, lemonade, and select juices at breakfast. If you suspect, though, that you'll be drinking more than four to five alcoholic beverages per day, you might save money by purchasing a drink package. Drink packages often include more than just alcohol, such as soda, non-alcoholic cocktails, specialty coffee, and bottled water. If, however, you're just buying a package for the convenience, you might end up spending more than you would if you just purchased each drink a la carte. Plus, most mainstream cruise lines will allow guests to bring a certain amount of wine, champagne, or beer on board with them. So it's important to weigh your drinking habits in advance so you can choose the best and most cost-effective decision for you. Our 12th tip is to put your phone in airplane mode. One of the biggest mistakes a first-time cruiser can make is forgetting to put their phone on airplane mode. If you don't, you'll receive an unpleasantly high roaming bill from your cellular carrier upon return. Another way to save money is by opting not to purchase the cruise line internet packages. If you can, utilize the free Wi-Fi in ports of call or purchase an internet package and share it amongst your travel party. Unless there's a specific reason that someone needs to stay connected the entire time, this can be a Good approach for you. Number 13 is to book spa treatments on board. Once you board the ship on embarkation day, head right on over to the spa. Not only will they often have discounts on same day treatments, but you might be able to enter a raffle for free treatments throughout your cruise. Another way to save money on spa treatments is to book on port days. Since most guests will be going ashore, the discounted treatment prices are an incentive for guests to hurry back earlier or to simply remain on the ship and enjoy a spa treatment. Number 14 is to stick to going to the beach. 
Excursions can be expensive, whether it's a zipline tour through the jungle or an all-inclusive beach day. Beaches are often a cost-effective way for you to enjoy your day ashore. To save money, consider taking a cab from the port to a nearby beach and renting lounge chairs for the day. If you're docked at a private island, you can have a great day by just utilizing the complimentary amenities available like the buffet lunch and the lounge chairs. And a pro tip, buy snorkel equipment at your local sports or big box retail store before you go on your cruise. You can use the equipment at multiple ports rather than paying for it multiple times at different ports. Number 15, if you're flying for your cruise, don't rely on cruise line transportation to get you to the port. Booking round trip transfers from the airport with your cruise line might seem convenient. And while that might be true in certain circumstances, it's often much more costly. The cheapest way to get from the airport to the port is public transportation. But this of course can require multiple transfers and take a considerable amount of time. If you're not up for that, you can also try a ride sharing service like Uber or Lyft or take a taxi. Instead of charging per person like the cruise line transfer well, you only have to pay one price per vehicle. And our last tip to save money for first-time cruisers, if driving, look for a hotel that offers parking to cruise passengers. This is a great tip. Whether you're driving or flying, you should try and get to the port the night before departure, especially if your drive is over five or six hours. It's no surprise that parking at the port is probably going to be expensive, but many hotels will allow cruisers to have a bundled discount or free on-site parking with a pre-cruise stay. So for example, the Homewood Suites by Hilton in Cape Canaveral offers parking for $10 per day plus tax. In comparison, Port Canaveral charges $17 per day plus tax. All right, those are our best tips to save you money on your first cruise. Comment below different ways that you like to save money when you're on a cruise and maybe a few things that you think are worth the splurge. Thanks for tuning in today, everybody, and be sure to like and subscribe to Cruise Blog so that you can be notified every time we have a new video. Happy cruising, everybody, and thanks for watching.